So today, we're gonna run this GPU on this ultra mini PC. This might get interesting. Stay tuned. Okay, when I originally reviewed this Geekom mini PC, I said that it wasn't a great option for gaming, and that's true. However, I also said that you couldn't upgrade it to a dedicated GPU because, well, obviously it's size. However, that wasn't entirely true. There is a way to run a dedicated GPU on a system like this. In fact, there are several ways. We could buy a Thunderbolt GPU box, but those are actually kind of expensive. And this system doesn't even have Thunderbolt. So that might be an option for you if you have a mini PC with Thunderbolt, but in this case, we simply don't. So I needed another option and I wanted this option to be as cheap as possible. I wanted the absolute lowest cost of entry to run a dedicated GPU externally because obviously we have to run it externally because it literally won't physically fit inside of this tiny little case. So after a little bit of research, I found this little guy on eBay for $14. This here is an NVMe to PCI Express adapter. It allows you to use the PCI Express bus to the NVMe slot for a PCI Express device like a GPU. So let's get this thing installed. So installing this adapter actually isn't that hard. Let me show you how to do it. Essentially, all you have to do is open up the bottom of this Geekom mini PC. Yours might be different. If you have like an Intel Nook, it might come apart a little bit differently, but this is the way this one comes apart right here. So depending on what kind of device you have, this might be a little bit different, but for this device specifically, you just open the bottom up in order to get access to the M2 drive. Today, we're actually gonna walk through this because I had some people complain that they didn't like my montages, so I figured we might as well do a video where I actually go step by step again. So once we open this up, we just gotta be careful not to rip this ribbon cable right here. And then once we get it open, we can kind of set this to the side. Obviously, we're removing our M2 slot in order to install this adapter. So we're gonna need something to boot off of. Luckily, this system will allow you to run a two and a half inch drive. And this one, I already have an install of Windows set up on it, so all I have to do is just plug it in. We're actually gonna be booting off of this two and a half inch drive because we're taking the M2 drive out. And to install that, all you do is you just slip it in, you line it up with the SATA port, and then just push it in place. It installs pretty simply, just like that. And then we gotta remove the M2 slot. And to do that, there's one little set screw right here. You remove that screw, and you should be able to take the M2 drive out of the system. And then once the M2 is out and out of the way, we're gonna install this adapter here. And this adapter fits back in exactly like an M2 card does. Then once it's screwed in place, we can simply take our PCI Express slot, plug it into our GPU, and there we go. We have a GPU running on an Ultra Mini PC. But there's a few other things that we're gonna need. What we need is an external power supply because obviously we can't get power from the mini PC in order to run the GPU. So for that, we need two plugs on this one, at least for this adapter right here. One of the plugs is just an old floppy drive style plug that we can plug into the PCI Express slot itself. This is where the slot gets its PCI Express power from. And then we also need a regular power plug if your GPU has one. Most GPUs nowadays do. And we're gonna plug that into place. And once that's plugged in, we should be just about ready to go. At this point, all we need to do is plug in a monitor, a keyboard and mouse, and we're good to go. So I'm gonna get a keyboard and mouse, and we're gonna get this thing fired up. All right, now that I got the keyboard and mouse installed, all we have to do is give power to our GPU right here, and hit the power button, and the system should come on. Should, but it's not. Why is it not coming on? I don't know. Okay, so reset a little bit. You need to have an adapter in order to power the power supply. And for some reason, my adapter wasn't working right here. So I had to simply short the prongs on the power supply that are necessary in order to get the power supply to run. But 
Typically, you can buy one of these things fairly cheap. They usually come with a lot of water cooling accessories because it's nice to be able to power on a water cooling loop without having it plugged into the motherboard. So a lot of times you should have some of these around. If you don't, you can always pick them up really easy. Or there's instructions online on how you can short a power supply in order to run it without it being on a motherboard. But either way, that's not what this video is about. Now, the next thing, now that we have power going to the power supply, we should be able to fire this thing up and get a picture. So let's give it a shot. All right, power supply or the video card powered up and let's see if it boots into Windows. And there we go. Now we have a external GPU running on an Ultra Mini PC, as silly as that may be. And it works pretty decently. Okay, so this Mini PC originally came with integrated graphics. Obviously, since this is an eighth generation i5, it came with the Intel Iris 655 integrated GPU. We're upgrading it to a GTX 1660, which is pretty much by every standard a far, far better than the Intel Iris that comes in the mini PC. However, we do have some limitations. First off, the NVMe slot is limited to four PCI Express lanes. This means that these adapters can never go above PCIe 4X. However, with this specific setup, we have an even worse limitation because for some reason, the NVMe port in this Geekcom mini PC, I can't get it to go over 1X. So it's currently using a single PCI lane to run this GPU. I'll put a screenshot right here of GPU-Z that I used to confirm that this card was only running at 1x. Now, I don't know if this is a limitation with the Geekom Mini PC itself, or if it's the adapter that I picked up on eBay for 14 bucks. It could be either. So the GPU is never going to reach its full potential simply running on one PCIe lane, especially since this card was originally designed to run on 16 lanes. So we're going to have to keep that in mind in regards to our benchmarks. Because, yeah, we are going to do some benchmarks. We're not going to go through all this work to set this thing up and not see how much better it runs. So let's get to those benchmarks now. The first game we're looking at today is CSGO. This game can pretty much run on a potato. We've actually tested that many times on this channel. In fact, for these benchmarks, I didn't even change the default settings in the game. This game is running at 1080p with the settings exactly how they were out of the box. With the Intel Iris integrated GPU, we were able to get 38.9 FPS average, which honestly isn't bad considering this is integrated graphics. It would definitely be playable at that frame rate. However, once we installed the 1660, we were able to get 156.2 average FPS. That's a 120% boost in performance and makes this game pretty enjoyable to play. The next game we're looking at is GTA 5. Even though this game is pretty old, it still benefits greatly from at least a mid-tier GPU. I ran these benchmarks at 1080p with the graphic settings on high. With the integrated GPU, we got an average frame rate of 24.7. That low of a frame rate is definitely not the funnest experience in GTA 5. However, once we installed the 1660, we were able to get an average frame rate of 93.5. That's a 116% boost in performance. And just like in CSGO, makes this game very playable. The next game we're going to look at today is one of my personal favorites. It's a game called Wreckfest, which is really just a destruction derby game. You, if you haven't played it, I highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. This game was benchmarked at 1080p with the settings on high. With the integrated GPU, we got a dismal 13.7 FPS. Now, we're getting into territory where it's not only a not very fun experience, but it's virtually impossible to play the game at that frame rate. Once upgrading to the 1660, we got an average FPS of 74.1. That's a 138% boost in performance. Not only did this make the game playable, but it made it enjoyable to play. So at this point, I was using some pretty low-end games. So I decided to bring it up a notch and run some games that are a little more resource intensive. To start out with, I benchmarked Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Now to be fair, I had this game at 1080p with medium settings. I probably should have gone down to low settings, but leaving them at medium was definitely quite the experience. With the integrated graphics, we got our worst average frame rate yet at 10.3 FPS. It wasn't pretty 
and definitely was not fun to play. Imagine clicking on your controller and waiting several seconds for Laura Croft to respond. That was pretty much what it was like a straight up slideshow. However, after upgrading to the 1660, we averaged 68 FPS, definitely not the best numbers, but with 147% boost in FPS, the game was actually playable. Finally, I could not round off these benchmarks without at least trying Cyberpunk. If you think this system with this integrated graphics could play a game like Cyberpunk, then you have very low standards. I also benchmarked this game at 1080p with medium settings because, you know, I like to abuse myself and playing cyberpunk at those settings was definitely a form of abuse. With the integrated graphics, we got our worst score yet with an average frame rate of 8.3 FPS. I'm pretty sure this benchmark here is now going to be the standard for what constitutes a slideshow. However, once upgrading to the 1660, we got 49.6 FPS. That's 140% improvement off of the integrated graphics and was a much better experience to play, but still a pretty low frame rate. If I were to lower the graphics settings all the way down, then this, just, then this system should be able to play Cyberpunk just fine. That is with the GPU, of course. So. There you have it. It is possible to run a dedicated GPU on an Ultra Mini PC. But now the question is whether you should do it. And you know, you have to account for what this is really gonna cost you. I already had the GPU and I took the SFX power supply out of my stock. So those cost me no money. When I'm done with this video, this GPU is gonna go right back up on that shelf. And this SVX power supply, well, it's gonna go right back in the box. But you have to keep these things in mind. This power supply costs about 40 bucks. And you have to also account for the cost of the GPU that you need to purchase to do this. I don't know that I would recommend going with anything more than a mid-tier GPU because you're gonna be limited to your PCI Express lanes no matter what card you use. With that in mind, this 1660 SC is currently selling on EVGA's website for $219. So in total, you're looking at $14 for the NVMe adapter, $40 for the power supply, and $220 for the GPU. That's a total of $274. The Geekcom Mini PC here is currently selling for $419 on Amazon at the time of filming. So that makes this entire setup right here $700. You know, it's just not worth it. Also, our performance was limited because of the NVMe slot being stuck on a single PCI lane. Now you might not have that problem. You may be able to get at least four lanes, but you're still limited on performance. I think a better solution will be to simply build yourself a mid-range gaming PC. However, if your system right now is currently running an eighth generation Intel processor and you have a PCI Express port that you can just plug a GPU in, then you can expect a bigger performance boost than we saw in our benchmarks because you'll actually have access to all 16 lanes and it'll be considered a lot more of an upgrade. So. Take that for what it is. With a regular system, you won't have to mess with all of this on the top of your desk just to get mediocre performance. But it was kind of a fun project to work on nonetheless. But right now, I'm gonna take all this apart and I'm gonna take this mini PC and throw it in my living room to replace the PC that I have out there. And no, I will not be running an external GPU because another problem with this setup is it's not wife approved. But if you would like to see the review that I did on this mini PC, then go ahead and check it out here. It's actually not a bad computer, but it's definitely not a gaming system. But with that said, you guys have a great day.